Good afternoon. My name is Eric Mucklow, and this is our Energy uh, and Sustainability Webinar Series uh, from the headquarters of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Engineering and Construction. Uh, today, we have a webinar that is intended to provide a brief background on thermal bridge problems that may occur in the building envelope, uh, that is the barrier between the conditions outside the building and inside the building. Uh, thermal bridges occur when highly conductive building materials, uh, such as aluminum or metal, uh, provide a thermal path for heat flow that bypasses the insulation layer. Uh, besides causing energy loss through the building envelope, expensive condensation from moisture and other mold problems may also result from this. This presentation includes a description of some commonly used basic terminology, uh, tools used to identify and quantify thermal bridges, and examples of their occurrences in Army facilities, as well as several mitigation techniques with step-by-step -step construction sequences for better understanding. Uh, today with us, we have Axi Pagan Vasquez, and he is a mechanical engineer from the um, Engineer Research and Development Center in the Construction Engineering Research Laboratory, where he has been involved with the heat transfer modeling of building envelope sections as a part of the laboratory's research in prevention and mitigation of thermal bridges in buildings. Uh, today's webinar uh, is going to be a part of our series in which you can earn AIA credits for learning units or CEUs. Uh, they are usually done in, grap in groups of five. Uh, you have to download the quiz available on the website uh, on the screen and uh, send your answers to the email address uh, at the bottom there on the slide to, uh, to gain credit, uh, assuming you get the answers correct. So again, I will uh, turn it over to Axie to take it from here. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, my name is Arthur again, and I will be giving a brief discussion about the thermal bridging problems and solutions within the Army facilities. First, I'm going to introduce some fundamental concepts about thermal bridges, like what they are, um, why such concern with them, and how we can quantify them. Then I will be showing some examples found in Army facilities using infrared imaging or also called thermography. I will be showing a small study performed in the barracks building model. And in addition, I will be introducing a thermal bridge mitigation catalog that we have been working with here at CERN, the Construction Engineer Research Lab. And finally, I will, I will move forward, as I already mentioned, uh, so, uh, towards some examples regarding how to build mediated timber bridge architectural details. Just a couple of examples, to me to be more exact. So, let's uh, talk about background definitions and some computation methods. So, after dealing with the air tightness and insulation, the next issue regarding an optimal building envelope are the timber bridges. This usually occurs when heat flow bypasses the insulation layer of the building, the building envelope system. This could lead to condensation and mold problems because of the localized temperature differences. Regarding analysis, 1D modeling, one dimensional modeling, or the concept of unidirectional thermal resistance layer is not enough to capture these thermal bridge effects. Relationship between these and the, uh, and the um, army. So, the Army has an extensive inventory of buildings that requires retrofitting. Considerable amount of buildings, all the new ones, uh, suffer from the thermal bridge problems. So, basically, we need to deal with them. So, in this picture, pretty much I just show a simple schematic of a, a wall system that has basically plywood on both sides, have some insulation bed on the interior side, and basically we have a fuel slot. Essentially, uh, when we have this type of wall system, usually your, the conventional way to analyze this um, type of wall, we usually assume that basically the wall, let's say, that is um, categorized as R11, having an R11 insulation. In fact, just given this small or basically relatively small area of steel slot, they actually can uh, reduce your actual um, efficiency in the whole wall system just because the heat just finds its paths just to go from the warm side to the cold side. 
So basically, on the lower image here, um, this we have like a blue line, a red line, a red stripe. Essentially, it shows that the this is pretty much a temperature temperature profile of the cross section of the wall, in which shows that the uh, temperature temperature field just changed where we have these two. So this means essentially that the heat just moved to these two cells again, and you basically can expect to have higher temperature on the other side of the wall and lower temperature on the interior side of the wall, in which you would expect to have um, pretty much uniform temperature. So, definition. Um, essentially, what are timber bridges? They essentially are building envelope localized regions that possess high heat transfer rate as compared to its neighbors. This usually happens in building envelope locations in which the apparent high timber system is displayed, or high timber system is apparently shown, as we saw in the previous picture. Um, timber bridges mainly develop where A, there's a high difference, uh, high thermally conductive component, component penetrating the envelope insulation layer, as we saw in the previous slide. B, when there's a change between insulation layer thicknesses, and C, where there's a difference between geometries of the building envelope surfaces. And this is basically an example, like a corner of the wall. So, type of timber bridges. Timber bridges are usually quantified with these three parameters shown in this slide. The first one is the UNOX, uh, which characterize the clear field timber bridges. These are timber bridges that, in which are presented as patterns across the building envelope clear field sections. In this case, we have a wall system that has uh, two horizontal ligures. In this, um, also, basically, this wall will have uh, these two stops, as shown before. In the second case, we have the linear timber transmitter timber bridge type, which are quantified with the Greek letter psi, PSI. The second. Um, Oh, so the, the second picture shows a floor slab connection along with a brick shelf angle. Um, essentially, that increases the heat flow to just that localized region, as opposed to have just a single wall without any connection with the floor slab. And in the third case, we have the point thermal bridge, uh, the point thermal transmittance, which are also quantified with another Greek letter. The one that seems to be an X is actually a Greek letter chi or CHI. Coin thermal transmittances usually describe the heat transfer effects associated with structural component penetrations across the building envelope. As in this case, we have a steel, top, a steel tube just penetrating that insulation wall. So basically, just moving a little bit more mathematical, uh, but to make our life happier and easy, I'm going to you know, tell you that the parameters discussed in the previous slide are used in the equation shown here to individually or collectively capture the thermal bridge effects in a building section. Um, just to not get into two details, but if you want to have more details, please just send me a question at the end and you can just answer anything about this. So, identifying thermal bridges in army facilities. So, first of all, we need to have an idea of what to look at when you when you try to think about timber bridges in buildings. So, essentially, uh, the left image shows a schematic of a section view of a building, while the right image figure just shows a plan view of the building. So, there are different type of timber bridges that are usually found, like window door fittings, a grade, uh, dust service and connections, wall corners, etc. But the most critical ones are, I will say, uh, the wall roof. Um, uh, um, wall roof junctions, parapets, window and floor, uh, window and door fittings, sorry, such like their head seal and jam, in addition, we shall talk to also designing to prevent timber bridges in projections such like balconies and intermediate floors. Connections and finally, but not less important, at the grade level, where we have the building foundation and associated timber bridge. 
Um, these are the ones that could give us a big head edge, particularly all these sets I mentioned here. So moving towards some survey that we just made a couple of years ago. Essentially, uh, these are some, this, the next couple of pictures I'll be showing you some army facilities in which we use thermo uh, thermography or infra infrared imaging. So essentially the right image, an infrared image picture of, or uh, just show the high temperature signatures at the grade level and uh, the window frames. You need to make the clarification that, particularly, that infrared imaging or thermography is very useful to get a qualitative idea regarding what's happening within the building. However, all two of these images are able to show you, um, to show us very nice and colored pictures. Um, sometimes they can be somehow deceiving. Think that we are able to see this temperature field in the camera because the camera is able to recognize and process the immediate surface thermal radiation. What we are trying to look here are the effects associated to the thermal conduction. So basically it's a big difference in terms of conductivity transfer and radiation heat transfer. So um, let's say that we have exactly the same picture taken at the same time, but we tell the camera that the surface thermal radiation properties are different. So we should expect that that 48.1 Fahrenheit on the uh, right side of the basically the scale uh, will increase or decrease. So again, infrared camera, infrared camera can give you a good idea regarding where is the problem, and they usually suffice or they are enough regarding what we are trying to do in this case. But for more detailed analysis, we should use another type of measuring method. So by the way, this type of building this is a dining facility. So you can see here, compared to the scale, um, essentially it's a white region, or pretty much a reddish and white region, show the highest temperatures of this, um, of this um, basement in the image. Um, essentially they are showing the foundation and also window frames here. So essentially in this case, um, this is another building, this is an army reserve center. Uh, at the right side, in, the, in this case, the uh, thermogram, we can appreciate that high heat flow is just going through the building intermediate floor slab, as indicated by the red and yellow pattern. Uh, it's very interesting that also we can see uh, at top, the top of the, uh, the wall made of, of glass blocks, we can just appreciate the lintels. Pretty much interesting, I was not expecting this originally, but it makes sense because usually lintels are, are made of steel or some other metal material. So also very common just to see uh, the window frames. In this case, a very, very red, reddish color here. Um, the next one. So in this case, this picture, this is a uh, building barracks. Same thing. Basically, we can just appreciate the high heat losses through the uh, door frames and window frames. Uh, the next picture here, next slide. Um, this is a pretty much a battalion headquarters building, and uh, this is a perfect example of point timber bridges, particularly because we have this uh, steel beam that penetrates or just crosses the building envelope just to pour this small roof. Let me show here. This, uh, the, um, okay, let's indicate here with this small arrow. So you can just see it here. So essentially, these beams shown in the thermogram pretty much just conduct all the heat from the inside to the outside. Um, you can expect that, but definitely that's something that we need to deal with if we if would like to handle these type of issues. So, oops. Um, basically the final one, and that yeah, probably was very interesting as well, because in particular, what we are seeing here, in this case, is a tactical equipment maintenance facility. Um, and these patterns here, shown as red, are very difficult to see, if, or are very difficult just to, to uh, predict, just looking at the uh, regular image, our RGB image. If you look at the image on the left side, well, we might not have any idea that we have very high conductive material inside the wall system here. So 
Um, in any case, it losses are still there, and their <laughs> the heating bills just go up in the most sneaky way, just by this type of thermal bridge. So the impact, thermal bridges. So in terms of the impact, we at Thoreau had uh, just chosen a very simple example in which we analyzed the thermal bridge overall effects in a barracks building. Essentially, we took a model already made um, by the Sir Net Zero team, in which uh, we appreciate a lot. And basically, we incorporated the thermal bridge effect on it. The model was built using the Department, Department of Energy and the Plus software. And Essentially, the model itself consists in an energy-wise not very efficient building. Remember the side values and, uh, that I discussed about a couple of minutes ago? Um, well, here is one example about where to use them. The side values are multiplied by the length of the section that acts, they, they act upon. This gives you an estimate of the energy loss magnitude that you could get in the building. So basically, this table on the top just shows the high value of different, uh, different type of architectural details. So in this case, we're talking about the window connection. Um, here, essentially, window connection, we have a 0 0.308 BTU per hour fit, uh, Fahrenheit. And subsequently, for the window seal, the jam, on the foundation, that's the value that we have. And at the top row, basically, we have the length, the total length that this linear thermal bridge acts upon. So essentially, it's a matter of multiplying the linear thermal transmittance by this length, and we can just get a good idea of the impact. So uh, just don't be um, surprised about the total length of the window frame. It says uh, 502 feet plus 502 plus 840. Well, we just need to remember that, well, this building have a lot of windows. In this case, you need to be more exact, at least this model. This building have uh, 332, 333. Um, so essentially, I'm just showing here what type of timber bridge we analyze in this building, this particular building. So essentially, basically we have a floor slab connection. The red dashed line indicates where we just have chosen just to incorporate this um, linear term of effect or linear term of transmitted. Okay, um, basically we have also the uh, foundation. And then we just basically just take two, all the wing, uh, building perimeter, incorporate the foundation linear term of transmitted, and also the famous uh, window frames. So, right now I'm on slide 21, just in case, but just showing the overall result of the small study. Um, so essentially, we have around 90 mm BTU per year for the window frame and intermediate floor flat, and almost 30 mm BTU per year of energy spent by the um, building HVAC system just due to all these uh, thermal bridges. So, something very important to highlight here is that these energy losses will certainly go up for a high performance building envelope that are actually not considered um, good details regarding timber bridge mitigation. So, we'll just talk about that a little bit more later. But essentially, if you're aiming for a high performance building and you leave all these timber bridges on place, you just never fix them, you will expect that the heat flow <laughs> and the heat, instead of going through the overall wall system, will be, the heat will be finding its path through all these timber bridges. So, Let's say that you increase the insulation on the building wall. Basically, all this heat will be trying to find its way more and more to this uh, thermal bridge uh, weak spots. So it's the time that we just aim for high performance building is more and more important to mitigate this type of problem. The um, thermal bridge mitigation catalog. So given all these thermal bridges issue, here at so we worked through the thermal bridge mitigation catalog showing several, several common army construction architectural details. The catalog, catalog essentially shows a current architectural detail with diagnosed severe thermal bridge problem and its equivalent mitigation, the mitigated version. 
the, catalog, uh, the current catalog that we have, uh, we have been developing here at CERN, have around 30 architectural details adapted from current army constructions. Um, essentially, the catalog is pretty much divided or categorized based on construction type. So, just to give you an example, uh, this pretty much is the layout of each catalog page. At the center of the page, we have both architectural details, which are the uh, existing and the proposed solution or mediated. Um, on the kind of left side, we have the notes section. They provide a general background and specific details of the items shown on the page. At the bottom, we have the modeling values and thermal performance tables. They provide material thermal properties and the thermal bridge quantified effects, respectively. On the right side, we have the step by step sequencing notes in which describe how to retrofit the detail for our thermal bridge, thermal bridge mitigated section. In other words, these sequencing notes just show how to move from the left drawing to the right drawing. I'm going to provide you a couple of examples in the next couple of three slides. So, in this case, um, this is a C, uh, this this one is a CMU wall assembly that is insulated at this in, at its interior. It might be difficult to catch up all the specific details of the drawings given the size of them right now. However, I could add that the most important feature to catch is that in order to reduce the thermal bridge in this foundation detail, um, is pretty much the most practical solution is to excavate around the building perimeter and add some insulation around it. So, as I explained before, a uh, table of modeling values which essentially contain here all the uh, properties that we have used. In this case, we use uh, we simulated all the heat transfer to different details. Um, we have the node section just showing particular detail. That, uh, for example, need to add, in this case, the uh, damp or need to they add a um, particular cover over the foundation or uh, make sure that you are cutting through the, this can be mortar to add a slate and then to add um, a flash material, etc. Pretty much the notes cover general description that are very specific to the detail. Uh, mitigated solution, we have a close up just to highlight the most important part of the particular detail in this fashion. And sequencing and quality control, essentially how to build up this detail. The next slide, essentially, is, you have to make sure again, just moving down. All right, detail 2A. The second example is a roof parapet with concrete roof in which in whose envelope wall is insulated at its, ex its exterior, exterior. Among the camera bridge different solution, these people might have, well, the proposed, well, well, the proposed solution here is to wrap the parapet with insulation. In other words, you just need to create a physical contact between the roof and exterior wall insulation. Even though this solution might seem to be something simple and perhaps for some of us very intuitive, creating this insulation continuity could bring high energy savings from the building envelope perspective. And node sequencing tables. The third example, um, this is a thermal bridge problem in a window, based in a window connection. This particular one, uh, this particular one is the uh, uh, the window seal. Wall has interior and exterior insulation. Also, the wall itself seems to be pretty much insulated, and perhaps using a thermally broken window, we can still have serious, serious thermal bridge problems in this type of fenestration, just at its connections, just at the interface between the uh, the window and the wall. A rule of thumb that I, can, that I have been learning through all these studies is that your window thermal break should be aligned with the wall system insulation plane. And it's a little bit difficult just to 
catch up that specific detail here, but I'm going to provide some more detailed views on, about this detail, this particular type of section. Um, another big challenge in this type of thermal bridge is the prevalence of the air and moisture barrier continuity within the wall and window connections. Essentially, uh, at least I think you can just perceive the blue dashed lines on the proposed solution, which essentially shows uh, where the uh, air and moisture barrier should go. And it's pretty much quite challenging just to keep this continuity when we fix the thermal bridge problems, but essentially, uh, the kind of uh, the kind of pages also consider that type of issues or that type of um, requirement that an actual um, an actual architecture detail to have continuity basically in the uh, the uh, insulation layer plane, the air barrier and moisture barrier. So we're going to provide some examples um, in this case in terms of mitigation of timber bridges. So here on timber materials, you can use just to create timber breaks on basically on eliminate this direct flow path, heat flow path to the building. So for instance, at the grade level, you can use the irated concrete at the wall first line of block to do the timber bridge occurring over there. And just talking about this particular block um, or another, well, depending on the situation, but. There are different materials that can help pretty much well. So building materials can create significant adverse timber bridges, include lower sustainability products such as fuel and concrete. Wood, plastic, and foam, on the other hand, on the other hand, can also be used in structural design and yet have much higher resistivity. It is important to broaden the palette of material used at critical, critical junctions and connection points. In doing so. Achieving a building with reduced timber bridges would be much easier. These materials uh, are widely available, easy to use, and inexpensive. Note, I don't know, here that under safe, uh, certain extreme loads, this problem might not be structurally possible to use. Your structural engineer definitely will need to calculate the load to find the best product suitable uh, to assess whether timber break is possible. Try unclicking the uh, draw button or arrow button if you have any of those highlighted. Yeah, it's. Oh, yeah. And then hit the down arrow on the left. Is it working out? There it goes. Yeah, that was actually no. <laughs> yeah, that was the issue. Thanks for that. <laughs> Didn't know it. Um, some other solutions. Essentially, uh, this case for uh, structural connections such as a canopy, balcony, sign connection, cladding attachment, brick ties, and window support. Uh, timber bridge with height, strength, stiffness, and creep resistance are required. This limits designer choices. Another thing. And another common method of creating a timber choke point is to reduce the area of the timber conductive elements. And we can see here on the uh, right image, basically we are replacing, in this case, just um, regular, uh, we're basically using over here a knife. Um, Uh, knife edge um, uh, brick, uh, brick time. Okay. Um, reducing the area of steel, aluminum, and concrete penetrating the primary thermal con control plane can be quite effective. However, cross sectional area reduction of 75 to 95 percent are often needed to reduce heat flow by even half in the case of metal. Fortunately, this is often used to accomplish as the use in structural design of night edge support of steel and can exhibit this level of heat flow control re reduction. So another um, couple of examples on uh, just of these structural components that can be used and we basically reduce the 
or heat transfer effect due to thermal bridge problem, in this case by reducing the uh, contact area. In this case just to support a bridge like this. And talk about a little bit more about the actual strategies as well. As well. So in terms of thermal bridge mitigation strategies, one commonly known is the wrapping, in which was discussed a couple of minutes earlier. Uh, the top image show a schematic of a concrete roof parapet. The lower images show the temperature contours of the parapet after running a heat transfer simulation. The purple colors indicate the cold temperature, while the red and white uh, white colors show warm temperature. It can be identified that the purple colors or cold temperature will stay outside if we just create this timber break, or if we, in this case, if we wrap around the um, parapet in insulation, as opposed to the first picture. And this is another strategy. This is called the timber breaking. Um, and by the way, it's more effective just to create this um, mitigated detail. This is more practical if it's done during the building construction process. In this case, it's a matter of using materials with high thermal resistance at the base of the parapet. Um, yeah, by the way, the number here, I just I found a typo. The left number should be 0 0.4 to 8 instead of 0 0.247 BTU per hour uh, Fahrenheit. It just exactly has the uh, previous line, but essentially it can just give you an overall increase of almost 100% of uh, heat reduction, heat flow reduction. So here it is, uh, we are transitioning to window connections. The fact here is a drain, air seal, and thermally continuous window installa um, installation for a wall with exterior insulation retrofit. The crucial thermal aspect is that the thermal break in the window aligns or connects with the insulation layer. An, alter outlet, um, an alternate, more general approach provides good thermal continuity by supporting the window or storefront with intermittent clips, whether metal, fiberglass, or wood. Fiberglass is sufficiently non-conductive at the standard fiber, uh, fiberglass angle. Um, say, uh, for example, uh, 3 inches by 3 inches by uh, 1 quarter of inch could be used over the entire width of the seal if desirable. Notice that the continuity between the air and water control layer uh, with the window a tape is used to seal the interface between the air water control layer and the, and the window. Um, particularly talking more about this particular um, this particular region. In this case, the air water control layer and the wall need to be sealed and need to be made continuous along with the um, this case with the window. So basically, you can use this on type of glazing tape just to cover or wrap around all the um, surface of the window hole. So another example here, also with window. Um, in this case is a window installation over white cavity using clips to support the weight of the window. The weight of the insulating glazing unit, or something um, usually known as the IVU, is always supported within the window, porting walls, storefront, frame, rubber, setting block, etc. To support the outer portion of the window with a single light, a single lid, uh, so that the timber break is aligned with the wall insulation, the support clips or window support should be installed below the, e, the IDU, or the insulated glazing unit. Some systems, like most of the parking walls, have thermal break that are structurally capable of transferring torsion to the inner part of the frame. Such system can be supported by the interior angle and other interior fastening methods. And by the way, it's a good opportunity to show specifically what I'm talking about when we refer to the uh, thermal break. So essentially, thermal break, for those that are not completely familiar with um, what is inside a window, Timber bridge essentially is this portion here, this draw, uh, basically that connects the side to side of the window frame. This piece of, this component usually is made of, or for more efficient windows, is made, uh, it's usually made of some very uh, high resistivity material uh, or low con camera conductivity material. Uh, pretty much good if you talk about. Uh, uh, well, if we 
talk about this, this structure of aspects. Uh, so essentially, this camera break should be aligned with the insulation plane, as I explained before, just to achieve a good um, camera performance and connection. So let's move to the sequencing. So essentially, I'm going to take the parapet uh, example that I show, uh, I've just uh, showed before in the uh, one of previous slides. Um, essentially, we have two options here, as I explained. We have the basically the uh, option of thermal breaking the parapet in our heat flow, and we have the option of wrapping around the parapet. Let's start with the option one. Let's, in this case, yeah, I mentioned before that is ideally this would be better if we just start or work with a new construction, but I'm going to show you some steps about retrofitting this detail. So basically we have uh, this continuity of the insulation plan, uh, of the insulation of the uh, building envelope at that particular section of the basic parapet. So we are going to insert a timber rig here. So let's start by just removing the capping and all the top materials of the, cap, uh, the parapet. You need to remove the flashing, looking up fault to expose the full CMU uh, parapet. Particularly we're aiming just to pretty much remove a little bit the insulation at the bottom. And then after having the parapet exposed, we just move to, uh, toward the outside and start removing the bricks at a low level such that we'll be able to maneuver with the exterior insulation. We can remove it and we know just to cut the parapet and essentially that can be done um, using a uh, uh, concrete, um, uh, pretty much a concrete saw. So we just remove the parapet you just you can just take a protrude here and basically add an air tightness barrier uh, before continuing uh, before moving up on the insulation. And then basically just add uh, of course of this irated blood, the one that I mentioned before. So here in all the examples and the material material that we can uh, use for this type of uh, irrigation. We need to anchor bolts and basically make sure that the uh, air, aerated blocks are in place. Just continue, put back the CMU blocks atop the uh, aerated block. Then we just we insert the insulation. And basically, we can just replace back the, in the remove insulation. So right now, we can expect to re pretty much see that the parapet is continuous, the parapet insulation is continuous along all these corners. So, this we just can then go back and just put back the all the remove bricks at the top, replace the flashing on the top of the bricks and add the roof cover and waterproof layer. And finally put the capping and voila, we have the new junction here with a reduced uh, thermal break effect. The other option, I would say the just wrapping around the carpet is effective, not as ideal and as effective uh, uh, by placing a timber break, but also basically a very good option, particularly if we talk about retrofitting. So essentially it's pretty much similar procedure, but instead of breaking up or removing the whole carpet wall, it's a more about more it's more a matter of removing the uh, the cover, the roof, covering asphalt and pretty much add insulation and make sure that the insulation is continuous all the way around the parapet and then just go back and put back the, all the uh, roofing uh, asphalt and cover. So essentially, you just also mitigate the timber bridge um, effective as well, might be more, more cost effective but than, the, uh, than breaking up all the parapet but Again, uh, inserting the timber break more might be more feasible if you talk about new construction other than replacing all the components. Well, step by step sequencing, going to move towards the uh, building foundation. So pretty much with the schematic of this uh, foundation. And by the way, as I mentioned before, these are pretty much representative of what we have in our new facility. So basically, um, 
to consider those <laughs> did in the future. Um, so essentially, well, we will not be able to break off. Will be very expensive, difficult to break off all the foundation and insert a timber break. But in this case, um, we have the option as well just to wrap around the insulation, the building foundation wall, and add insulation to reduce the timber break effect. So we can start by excavating the uh, ground, essentially up to uh, uncover the um, the footing of the foundation, then just cut a slit along the uh, morphine joints. We just add an um, extra polystyrene board as an insulation and basically need to have a cover just to be protected against all the moisture on the ground. This we just add a bit of sealant at the slit that we cut before. We just add the uh, flashing just to protect the top of the insulation. Add a little bit more of sealant. And basically we can just add additional gravel if we don't have gravel and put back the um, soil that we removed. And basically we have um, mitigated pretty much appropriate way the uh, foundation to migration for building. And going to I think this is one of the most challenging ones, the windows, uh, celebration windows. So essentially, in this case, I'm going to talk about whole new construction instead of retrofitting. This will give you an uh, alternate way to, to show how this can be done. Um, so essentially, the arena window, there's no alignment in the insulation plane. They are they you can see that by looking at the timber break that this is just at the exterior side, pretty much of the uh, well, building envelope. So we can expect that the heat flow just go out around and just just get into the building just through the window frame, just below the uh, frame itself. So condensation can occur because of this type of um, construction or type of um, or this placement window. So we can just one pretty much Way just to uh, mitigate the timber breach, you can just add um, uh, thick timber just um, to cover the hole, the window hole of the wall. So we can just, well, this is the other idea here, but essentially just start up from the scratch. So just can start building up the through the um, field studs and start moving to, uh, towards putting the Gibson wall. We just add the air water barrier and cheating. Then we just where we need to place these um, treated timber or plywood box all around the uh, window hole perimeter. Um, essentially, we need to make sure that the uh, plywood, or in this case, the wood box itself, is pretty much sealed, is pretty much protected at its corner and everywhere around. This case for more for uh, water and air control. Then we can just add the anchor that will be supporting the bricks. And we can just start, in this case, placing the back then. Um, this will pretty much be uh, providing all this barrier or air barrier continuity on the wall uh, after placing the um, whole window system. Well, in this case, yeah, I'm just going to place all the uh, uh, the back end anchor all around the window hole. Then we can just start putting together all the insulation in between the anchors on the way up. Notice this 45, around 45 degree, degrees cut of the insulation. Very important, I'm going to explain later why. Um, essentially, we just start up putting all the bricks all the way until reaching the level of the lintel. Then we just add the lintel. And in this case, the also the um, seal uh, the seal blocks. Before just moving forward, I mean, moving, moving forward, uh, sorry, um, you need to add this case a side dam to the side of the lintel. Basically, the main purpose of having this 45 degree cut of the insulation is just to put this membrane that will be pretty much working as this. Um, um, flexible flashing or made of a polymeric material or low thermal conductivity material. Um, 
if you can just put back the insulation on the other side and get in the top, we need to, of course, leave a small gap between the insulation and basically the membrane just to let the water just flow down. We can just continue putting back the bricks to cover all the walls. So we need to make sure just we're going to place the window, so we need to make sure to add some sealant, big sealant, all around the um, uh, back then anchor. So we're ready to place the window. And then be sure just to put additional big sealant all around the window edges, corners. And we can just add a snap on frames just to cover the uh, side on this hole between the window and the wall. And finally, we just need to work with the interior, just add the um, interior finish in the wall. And then, our detail is complete. So, here's a uh, close of this. So, in summary, standard bridges usually quantify the design high values liable to occur in, in a path between the two sides of the building envelope. Um, I think we discussed basically the main definition. So pretty much when you have these weak spots where you have high camera conductivity, you can expect to have heat flow through the through there. Usually again how camera bridges. We use infrared imaging to just show a couple of pictures about what type of problem we can expect in our buildings, in our army buildings. So the magnitude will basically be different depending on the type of Action depending on material, depending on building, etc. We can expect different impact on on um, thermal bridges. But for sure, I will tell you that well. Again, if you move toward high performance building, you can expect that this problem will be more and more serious if it's not attacked. Uh, just show a thermal bridge catalog, a couple of pages, and again, we already have about 30. We expect to expand this catalog in the future. And finally, I'll show a couple of step-by-step -step sequencing examples of architectural details, how you can improve your uh, existing uh, construction detail for a um, thermal bridge mitigated one. And so, first of all, I'd like to thank all the Erdic 13 uh, thermal bridge modeling and mitigation team, also including our friend Nick Alexander. Uh, basically, I think uh, most of you know him. He works at Overhead District. i been helping us a lot in terms of all these practical aspects about doing it uh, with construction sections. Uh, definitely need to thank uh, Mark Lawson from Morrison Hirschfield, Bob Ryan from the Public House Academy, and John Strobing uh, from the Building Science Consulting. And have any questions, and thanks for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Axie. <clears throat> this is Eric Mucklow. I'm opening up a question and answer panel on the right hand side of the screen. Um, and uh, so the participants uh, at the bottom of that panel, you'll see a text entry box. Uh, you can type your questions into that text entry box to submit them. Uh, they will show up, and only I will be able to see them. And then I'll uh, look for redundancies and things and consolidate them into uh, a question that I can uh, read, our, read to our speaker, and he will answer them um, verbally. Uh, if there are any questions. Uh, so uh, basically I want to thank uh, Axie for uh, for doing this today. It was very informative, uh, very thorough, especially like all the uh, thermal imaging pictures. It's uh, very revealing how these, uh, how these things come through. Um, this is one of the things, the areas of growth in our field in terms of design for both new construction mm -hmm. and retrofits that's been very challenging. Uh, we spend a lot of money and time and effort on uh, specifying insulation layers. Uh, that then are diminished by uh, details that bypass the uh, insulation layers and then uh, inside those corners and things where those uh, bridges are uh, if that uh, surface temperature drops below the dew point uh, then you can end up with a lot of condensation and the condensation can lead to water damage and of course of course uh, mold and mildew and things like that um, so if anybody has any questions uh, we have a uh, little probably not quite 10 minutes yet um, <clears throat> we have one that says, um, so the uh, the catalog, um, John Lanzarone asks uh, that he's looked around on the Erdic site. When will the uh, catalog be available, uh, or if it is, uh, where is it available? Well, um, just to answer that question, 
Essentially, uh, we pretty much finished, as I mentioned, 30, uh, 30 pages. The car right now is under revision from headquarters. We definitely need to expect to have some additional formal revisions. Um, personally, I'm not can answer exactly when, the, but I can tell that pretty much the catalog right now is ready, pretty much complete at least with these uh, 30 details. And it's something that will be expanded uh, along the time. Um, but essentially, we need to pretty much wait until uh, more formal revisions from different uh, sustainability centers. Mm -hmm. Prior to having it available, open. Okay. okay. If you need any help from the headquarters level, uh, you know I'll be happy to uh, help facilitate uh, pushing something through, or maybe getting it issued as a uh, a design guide or something like that. Um, <clears throat> oh, we have another question. Um, on the retrofit options, has there been a cost analysis to determine the payback uh, that's been that's uh, been realized? Uh, if it can, if so, can we share the uh, the installations can get their input on utility costs and, and construction factors to determine uh, if this would be a good course a, a, uh, action. Uh, basically, it, has there been a payback uh, performed on the analysis, life cycle cost analysis on doing the work to uh, eliminate these? Well, I would definitely say that I would have been expecting that question. It's one of the, one of the most important ones, but. I would say that most of our work has been more focused on specific solutions um, prior to moving to our, the actual cost aspects. Cost aspects might just, you can expect very different, you can be expecting very different results in terms of locations, um, what is actually required based on building construction. And therefore, we cannot specifically talk about particular Details in that um, regarding the question, but definitely, eventually, we're going to move toward that. Um, but to the answer, no, I wouldn't have made any cost, specific cost analysis on that. Uh, okay, and I get somebody asking again about the catalog. Uh, if there'll be a email uh, or webinar uh, like the webinar available, uh, I'm sure once it's published, we can get an email out to everybody announcing it. Uh, that's uh, definitely something that uh, I could issue from my end if, if somebody else isn't already on it. Um, another question is, um, so with the uh, parapet, at the CMU parapets with the thermal brakes, uh, how do you handle uh, seismic conditions uh, or blast resistance around the window uh, frames? Oh, the, oh, the window frame itself. So Okay, essentially, yeah, you know, basically, there was one example that we have um, taken into account before. Uh, we have other kind of, um, kind of details, particularly with, particularly with blast resistant windows. Essentially, blast resistant windows uh, is not the window itself, but the actual window hole that has a steel to pretty much providing this um, protection, at least in this case for. Um, um, uh, Steel stop building. Basically, we can't can expect to see these steel stop out around the, the window. So essentially, same strategy in terms of first of all trying to line the um, chamber break of the window with the insulation plane. But most important in that particular case is just to attach the window um, using this back dam anchor to the actual uh, steel stop. So in the case for the window head, this is usually it's usually to see that uh, just to find uh, like a steel plate just going from the window hole connecting the actual window. So pretty much providing uh, pretty much plugging as well as a link. So, so essentially it's more 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 a matter about using like a loose link in that particular case in the window head. But essentially. Again, it's more about moving the window and using, in this case, back them anchors will be providing some support in that. Um, that will, should not be uh, creating any problems or issues regarding having like a weaker window or a weaker connection. Um, but definitely we have to consider that as well in the in our tower phase. And maybe traditional designs where they might have had a continuous uh, steel anchor um, like you know, from the window frame back to the structure, like in the uh, the way you showed the uh, the lintel uh, angle iron uh, being tied back to the stripe the, the structure just with those knife edge black brackets uh, 
you know, rather than going back uh, continuously, uh, that would turn a linear thermal bridge into a point thermal bridge, which, which should uh, at least be a great reduction. Uh, sometimes you can't eliminate everything, yeah, but uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And also about the uh, right um, now, when you're doing the uh, the at grade repair uh, condition, is there a concern about uh, covering up the weep holes at the bottom of the CMU um, with the new insulation? Oh, well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, we have those particular nodes, yes, in the tunnel page. Just to make sure that not to cover the weep holes. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, definitely, we're considering that. So that's why they, they redirect that flashing yeah. out and over, and, and of course, then they the bottom of the CMU uh, they might be draining back to the foundation uh, drain on the inside uh, for what gets back to that point. Um, now, the uh, someone also asked about the link to the continuing education credits um, down here on the um, in the web links box. There's the new sustainability energy site. Uh, if you click on that and then click on browse to, uh, it'll take you. It'll open up another window. Should be another window, not this one. Uh, with the with the new Mercy site, uh, you will need to uh, have a, a login ID to uh, access that site, uh, but it's a simple registration process uh, to get into that. Uh, also, in that web links uh, down there is uh, the email us uh, should bring up a, your email um, outlook to uh, to email us a question if you have one, and there's also a link there to view the past webinar videos if you want uh, uh, help uh, passing those quizzes. Um, now below that box in the file share area, there's a uh, a link to download this presentation, uh, the PDF, uh, and it's also got some uh, notes on it as well and uh, little balloons that you can uh, refresh your memory with uh, for everyone. Um, again, we're at the four o'clock hour. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, again, thank you, Axie, for for doing this webinar with us today. Uh, appreciate everybody's good work. Well, thank you for participating. Yeah. All right. And uh, I'll I'll leave this uh, screen up for a little bit to allow people to download that presentation and to uh, and to get on that Mercy site through these links. Uh, let me bring up the. Um, I'll also go ahead and bring up that page that had the links uh, written out uh, for people that might want to write it down. Uh, again, thank you very much.